to be in Christ. What does that mean? I hear it all the time with a lot of my friends in overseas that I do sermons for from time to time, and they use my videos to translate in their language to use to teach. Now, outside of scripture, it is difficult to give an explanation of what that is. So we have to go to this scripture, which is the source that explains what it means to be in Christ. Now, since we all know that everyone is born in sin and to be in right standing with God, we have to be reborn in the spirit. And that can only be done by having faith in Jesus in that he died for your sins and for mine in our place because the wages of sin is death. So anyone that is born again, putting your faith in Christ, is transformed, renewed. The scripture clearly states that. So now, also let me refresh your memory that it is clear in scripture that God says, I do not hear the prayers of sinners. So then why does the Bible say, come boldly to the throne? It also says, we do not know how to pray as we ought. So the Holy Spirit prays for us with words that cannot even be uttered, grunting sounds, or in another, uh, maybe, that could be referred to as tongues. We don't know it because it's not explained other than what's written in scripture. So to be in Christ, did not Jesus say, Father, let them be one just as you and I are one. And is not referring to one accord like in agreement only, Yes, it is in agreement, but it literally means in one. For example, you looking and listening to my message is a individual. But have you considered that within you dwells two other people? That is in your DNA your mother and your father could be identified from within you. So regardless of opinion, this is a fact that you are a tripart being, even though you are one. Hopefully that can give you some kind of understanding to the Trinity or the triune person of God. And many of us use this, pastors and preachers and teachers, water ice and steam three 100 percent different forms liquid water but then you have an iceberg solid ice floating on the ocean and you can have that very iceberg obscured by mist all three separate physical entity but yet made of one source h2o that's just an uh, earthly analogy to give you an understanding. Our brain would probably explode if we, you know, God revealed its true nature to us. Anyway, on that note, to be in Christ is you are now in right standing. You can only be in right standing by your surrender to self, die to self, and be reborn to Christ. Therefore, when you now pray, God looks upon you, he no longer sees you because you are in Christ. When he looks upon you, he sees the glory of his son. And your prayers, if the Holy Spirit is praying for you and through you, then where is he? He indwells you. So this is a poor example, but I'll try. This is a Bible. This is you. 
This is the power of God. This is tiny you. You are in the Bible. So you no longer see the pen. You see the entire Bible. So that is a tiny example of being in Christ. You are clothed in His righteousness. Does not the scripture say that? So if you're clothed in His righteousness and you are therefore in right standing with God, you can pray boldly when you come to the throne. And that is why the scripture says God refers to us as children. Now, a, chill, a child can run to its father or parent with open arms, expecting the father to embrace them and to give their every desire and to withhold certain desires that a loving parent knows that will be harmful to that child, even though the child desires to have it. That is the wisdom of God. If we earthly can understand that clearly, how much more do we not understand the decisions that God make in our lives? That's why he says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, trust in him and he shall direct your path. Also, remember, he will direct you saying, go this way or go that way. That is the nudging of the spirit saying, you know, something told me I should have, but you didn't listen and you face the consequences. When you harden your heart, you tend to not hear that nudging anymore. So that's why you have to be sensitive. Why? Because the scripture says he speaks in a still, soft voice. So that is why the world or the evil one tends to distract you with so many unnecessary things that will keep you busy so that you won't hear God. You know, look at this um, societal example. The people that work with money, they study that $100 bill and know it so accurately and totally that there are, for example, a thousand different counterfeit bills out there. It is impossible to be accurate with all the counterfeits because they keep making more. But they study that one bill so well that immediately, if a counterfeit comes against it, they know. Not because they know the counterfeit, but because they know the true bill. That is the word of God. If you are untaught by God's word, then you will be misled and misguided by the many, um, the many different teachings of society. But those who are taught God's word, as soon as societal opinions come against it, we are immediately um, convicted by it and know that it is, is untrue. Sometimes we may not be able to articulate what it is, but we just know that that does not align with God's word. God's word says this, that does not. So we don't waste time thinking about what that is saying to corrupt what we already know is right. So that is what it means to be in Christ. God looks upon you and see his son clothed in the righteousness of God. There's an example of that in the Gospels as well. Do you remember when Jesus said uh, those uh, sheep, uh, wolves in sheep clothing? You see, they're covered in the uh, covering of a sheep, but inside they're wolves. It is the same thing with being in Christ. You change your ways, you surrender, you are in Christ, and now what's outside is who you are, the born-again nature, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide, teach, and lead you into God's righteousness to fulfill the works that was prepared for you beforehand 
that you may glorify your Father in heaven. That is why He answers your prayers to satisfy, comfort His children, and as a result, He gets the glory. I'm Pastor Rich, Walking Ministries Online, and I will see you soon.